Eddie, welcome back to the uh, Celtic nation of Cornwall. Yes. <laughs> How much empathy do you feel with this part of the world, with, with your background particularly? Well, I, I do like the, the Gaelic culture and I like what I'm discovering about it because I'm certainly not, not a person of... Um, you know, I wasn't academically educated in the Gaelic culture. We didn't really get it at school. So to discover songs and stories and things that don't have the English equivalent, you know, that that's a that's a thrill to me. I'm finding all all this prehistory stuff, and I think they have that here, don't they? They have this this kind of uh, uh, um, collective consciousness about uh, going back further than time, you know, further than the the Anglo-Saxon, further than the Normans, further than that. And I, I mean, think that's they're trying to keep the language alive. I mean, yeah. but you would support that, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that all languages, every voice needs to be heard. Every voice. I was in a place in Connemara, and there was a, an old man came in. He was about eighty. He didn't speak English. Didn't speak Irish. Even he spoke only this Gaelic, and it was only that flavour of Gaelic. It wasn't even you know the one that you would understand if you were from Donegal it, it was a, it was a real dialect um and and in Cromarty just last year i think it was the very last speaker of the dialect in Cromarty he passed away so there's no one else speaks it ever and i i feel i'm a wee bit like Seamus Innes like that and and Cecil Sharp i really think we we need to capture all these photographs of our of who we are so that our great great grandchildren will go oh that's what i belong to you know now, is, is it true that the one of the times you came here maybe the the last time that you literally just stuck a pin in the map and I did. was it a birthday you were celebrating yes it was my 40th and i was i don't want my 39th day to be spent in this where i was you know so i, I was kind of like right i'm going to find it and i'm going to plan it and i'm going to celebrate it and I want the sunset to be going down behind me while I'm sitting on a balcony and I want to see the sea. So I kind of focused on down this area and I kind of went like that, think. And there it was right in Lou. and I came here and I, the first thing I did was get a, a kind of uh, apartment, a house, flat. And um, when we arrived, there it was, the balcony with the sunset and the sea at the background. And so I got my picture, my 39th summer over. <laughs> Fantastic. And when you were standing on the stage uh, looking at the sea and you were able to, I mean, for example, the, the, the John Macefield lyric, yeah. I, I guess that brought it even more to life, didn't it? For you today? Oh, I yeah. just adore, adore poet, poets and how they're able to capture in, in our heads that were right there. I can't remember that, cocorrent or something. There's an Irish word when you can bring it to life. Or psychometrize is that the word? There's a word there, where you suddenly you can see the raindrops on their jackets, and they're they're conjured up right in front of you. And I think that's what poets do best, and um, and book writers, authors too. But I get it from poets. And we were talking about language earlier, and Eddie uh, became Edith as well on stage today, we? didn't you? Edith, <laughs> Edith Piaf, the French singer. Yeah, I'm about five foot ten, so she was about. Four foot eleven. I think you know. If if uh, if we were standing together, she'd probably belt me off the stage. You know, she's she's got a powerful range and voice. That woman. But she was my first obsession. I get obsessed with people, and she was my first. I used to sit by her grave in Pierre Lachaise, and um, when I was busking in Paris, that's where I. I she, I treated her as my angel. I used to pray to her. I'd bring her little pots of. Heather, and I'd put it down, I'd say from Eddie to Edith, and, and the, French, the French people that I met there, they called me Edith, that's the way they called me, and I didn't sing a lot of French songs then, but I kind of subsequently learned them, and sung them in Waterloo Station, and well, I, yeah, I had, a, I had fun in the 80s with, with language and singing. Well, it's been great fun having you here today, thank you. Oh, it's Absolutely. nice to be here, I'm, I'm, enjoy I'm so wanting to get a a palm reader and I want to do the whole candy floss thing and go and, I don't know, imagine pirates sailing off. Great. Thank yeah. you very much. That's fantastic.